So, as I don't want to upset the delicate balance of our friendship, I just thought that I'd come and speak to you first. Oh, no, Jenny, I don't think that would be a very good idea. Why not? Look, Jenny, I would love to give you my blessing, but Emmett has just got out of a very serious relationship and you saw how badly it ended. I don't think his head is in the right place for a new one. And I doubt you want some fling or something, do you? No, no. No, I suppose not. Look, um, bad timing, that's all. I've got to go somewhere. I'm sure if you're nice to Barney, he'll make you a cup of tea. No, 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 that's fine. I need to be heading off anyway, so... You okay, Jenny? Yeah, fine. Know you wore glasses? I don't. I wear contacts. Oh, I found them. Right. So what brings you here, darling? I just got a text from Daisy saying that Emmett wanted to talk to me here. Oh, anything I should be worried about? I doubt it. Lovely seeing you again. Hi, darling.
like you're using the bike rack? Why not? You're using the bike rack. I know. It's my bike rack. I can't see anyone if we are. Look, I'm gonna make this very clear for you. Um, every day at half 12, I go for lunch and I leave my bike at this bike rack. I then go to exercise at the gym for 30 minutes. Then I get the sandwich from the deli. It's been that way for as long as I can remember. But could you please, you know, I don't think so. Excuse me? Look, lady, there are plenty of other decent bike racks around. Why don't you give one of those a whirl? Well, this one is mine! Sorry to break it to you, sweetheart, but I'm using your bike rack right now, okay? So can you just... What? This isn't crazy bike rack, lady. You're in my seat. You're in my seat. Every day after the gym, I come here to eat my lunch in solitude. Is that a sandwich from the deli? Yes, indeed. My deli. You recommended it. And you're feeding it to the ducks. Look, I've tried to be nice. So far, you've been nice. But you seem to take great pleasure in interfering with my daily routine, so... Look, sweetheart, I'm not trying to interfere with anything. Maybe you should stop being so uptight. What did you just call me? I called you uptight, it's hardly an insult. I am not uptight. Says the girl that can't make any slight modification to her daily routine. I can modify my daily routine. It's just that you're such an obnoxious twit. Twit? Bless my delicate ears. That's what you're being. A selfish, arrogant, obnoxious twit. Look, um... Jennifer. Jennifer? Get yourself laid. You really, really need it. A bit of friendly advice. I don't need to be taking friendly advice from a poo faced scoundrel with knockoff shoes. A poo faced scoundrel? Did you kiss your mother with that mouth? You knew my mother, you would have known that to be a completely irrelevant question. So I'm sure that was some sort of fascinating character revelation. Seeing as a. Did you say knockoff shoes? Yeah. It's a bit rich coming from someone that looks like they just stepped out of a Marks and Spencer's catalogue. Well, have you know, these are Gucci. You were just trying to be intentionally obnoxious. Call me whatever you want. Call me obnoxious, call me a twit, call me a poo faced whatever. But please. Oh, and um, cheers for the sandwich recommendation, it was outstanding. I mean, the rudeness of it, Margaret. It was just plain, unflinching rudeness. I mean, he had the audacity to say, to my face, might I add, that I needed to get lit. That I needed to indulge myself a little more. Maybe he's right. Maybe I do need to, well, you know. But the Marks and Spencers comment was wildly inaccurate. I mean, I don't have the salary to shop in Marks and Spencers. You don't agree with him, do you, Margaret? No, of course you don't, because you're a dog. All you think about is food and walkies.
you find my house? Details on the inside, love. You shouldn't do that, you know. What if some unsavoury character had found it? You came to my house to give me my helmet. You're welcome. Oh, hi, Jenny. Jess, um, I'm here for Daisy, yeah, she's been waiting for you. Thank you, darling. Jenny! Hi! Oh, I'm so glad you came. I've actually got an old friend to introduce to you. This is Parker. I want to see the world. It's just nice that I can do what I want. Hi, Jenny. Nice to meet you. Jenny. Nice to meet you too. Um, Parker. James, well, Parker James the Third, if you want to be specific. <laughs> Never did ask for my name the other day, did you? Wait, do you two know each other? Yeah, well, I met your friend quite a few times yesterday, just by sheer coincidence. Really? Mm. She left quite the impression on me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that certainly sounds like Jenny. Hey! That's a compliment. So where were you going again, Parker? Uh, Moscow. Yeah. I just had to change planes at an airport nearby, I just thought I'd stop by and visit a few people, you know? How exciting! He's going to Moscow! Not deaf, Emmett. So, where were you coming from? Uganda. Went to go and help my charity, you know, build a school and a local hospital. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Parker's sort of a social prodigy. Oh, Daisy, you're too kind. I run a charity that helps to eliminate poverty in third world countries. It's a big charity. <laughs> mm, uh, so, what's the charity called? The Will to Grow Foundation. Hmm. I've actually heard of it. 50,000 people rehomed after Haiti. Your eyes like the sea. Tsunami warning systems up and down Sri Lanka. It's like swimming in an ocean. Poacher patrols in Madagascar. So strong. Sound familiar? Barney's going to uni in a few weeks. Really? Um, yeah, well, it's all very impressive, obviously. It takes a lot of financial effort and a lot of manpower, but in the end, we uh, make it possible. Uh, so you have a big charity? Big deal. Well, we're the third largest humanitarian organisation this side of the equator. I didn't tell you what I did last summer in Africa, did I? No, you didn't. Yeah, see, it's a great story. <laughs> right, so my story begins when me and my colleagues were camping and we got wind of some poachers that had set up a camp in the middle of the Sahara Desert, right? So what we did is we got on our trucks and we went down there. And by this point the fires were out of control. They were circling around us. We were doing our best to put them out, but it wasn't working. And then I saw her. The lioness. She had a cub in her mouth, just trying to find some desperate way to get him to safety, but... So I held up my arms. And I prayed that she would... Understand that I was friend and not foe. And she looked down at me. And I held up my arms and I prayed again. And she let go of the cup. And it fell and I caught it. In my arms and I held it close and I kept it safe. And then the fire engulfed the peak and the mother vanished. I'm sorry. We, I, I thought that the mother had perished in the fire. And it wasn't until the next morning when the veterinarian and I were attending to the cub's injuries and we saw the lion walk into camp. And barely paying heed to the rest of us, she, she came and she sat down at my feet and I realised she'd come to collect her cub. And she'd survived all of that just for the sake of her cub. So I picked it up and I put it down at her feet and she picked it up on her jaws and she walked away. And we never saw either of them ever again. That was beautiful. What happened to them? I don't know. 
I like to think they went and lived long, happy, prosperous lives as a family. Me too. Well, that was a very interesting tale, Mr. James. Parker, please. Call me Parker. But I have a meeting to get to with my client, so... Um... Well, it was great seeing you again. Thank you. I hope you see you again soon. <laughs> see you later, guys. <laughs> Bye, Parker. <laughs> So, Parker, um, yeah, I was wondering. Let me just squeeze in here if you yeah. don't let me. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? <clears throat> that I was just wondering if you like to um, work out. Do my fair share, I suppose. Hmm. That's yeah. fair. What about you? Yeah, do a bit, you know. Got to keep the guns in shape, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, what's your max bench or? Um. Seven benches. Yeah. Good try, mate. Mine's a hundred. So, what do you think? Are you sure? Another one for the last three sold pretty well. The third one not as well as the others, but... Well, don't you think you should spread your wings a bit? Maybe try something with a bit of a bigger skirt. I don't know. I guess I've just gotten so used to writing short stories that a novel really isn't my thing. Really? Yeah, and I can't really picture George working in a novel format. Well, maybe it's time to venture out. Maybe. I'll need to think about it though. Yeah, well, it is a big decision. I mean, do you stay in the genre that you've worked so hard in, done so well in, or do you attempt to experiment with other genres? It is a big decision, isn't it? Big, complex decision probably have to think hard about that one. Not like, say, choosing whether or not to lie to one of your best friends. What? I said, it's not like choosing whether or not to lie to one of your best friends. Like, um, when you said that Emmett wasn't ready for a relationship less than an hour or so before you got him together with Jess. Little lies like that. <laughs> Jenny, I don't know what Yes, you do. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't try and pretend that you don't. Jenny, I don't know what you think you Stop know. lying to me! I came to you. I came to you because I thought that you were my friend. And what did you do? You look me right in the eye and you lie to my face. Jenny, people. Do you know how hard that was for me? To have a secret like that for two years and have it treated like it was nothing. Like I was nothing. Um, Do you remember what you said? What you told me? I said that Emmett wasn't in the right You said place. Emmett wasn't in the right place for a relationship. And then what did you do? go to that little park with that little slut, Jess. And put him in the very thing that you said that he wasn't ready for. Jenny, I swear, I How am I meant to believe a single word you say to me now? You could have told me. It would have hurt. But at least it would have been the truth. Do you know what the worst part of it was? 
it wasn't the fact that you lied to me or the betrayal. It was it was how I had to find out. How did you? By seeing them together, with his tongue stuck down her throat. Look, Daisy. I'll uh, I'll publish your books. I'll be your editor. I'll go through every page with fine detail. I'll arrange your video shoots, your photo shoots, your press junkets, and I'll give you your paycheck when you're done. But from now on, outside of all this, you and I, we're done. Thank you for lunch, darling. It's fabulous. You ever since you came into my life with your stupid shoes and your, your stupid shirt and your stupid salon haircut, you just you made my life shit and 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 shit I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that was nothing to do with me. Well, not entirely to do with me. Do you like a drink? It's vodka. I know. It's two in the afternoon. And? Like your style. So you're Daisy's agent, are you? Yeah. She said you're very good. That's great. You know, I was actually looking for some representation myself. Really? Yes. Um, I'm a literary agent. I do books, short stories, and the occasional video blog. I know, and that's good for you, but I am myself in all seriousness a writer. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. So you're a billionaire, a wildlife enthusiast, a philanthropist, a television personality, an author, <sighs> and a massive egotist. Aren't I just outstanding? <laughs> Let's hear it then. Hear what? This awe-inspiring book you've written. Well, how do you know it's awe-inspiring? Everything you do is awe-inspiring. Well, I'm not going to tell you if you're going to be charged by it, so we are. Fine by me, darling. Right, so it's about this girl. Original. And she's very polite and well-spoken and a little bit stuck in her ways. And she works at this little up-and-coming law firm that her father has to set up, right? And she gets her first client. And her and the client, they got on really well and they become like really, really good friends. And one day, the client invites the lawyer over to her house. And the lawyer meets the client's brother. And she falls in love. Like, I mean, when she falls, she falls hard. The trouble is, the brother, he's in love with this other girl. And this girl's just sort of come out of nowhere. And the brother doesn't seem to notice the lawyer, no matter how obvious 
Deloitte makes her affections towards the client. When did she fill you in on all of this? An hour ago. Emmett. Really. Where you start? Is she alright? Daisy, I mean. I think the word I'd use is distraught. Did she ask you to come here? God, no. If she knew I was here, I'd never hear the end of it. What's to stop me calling her and telling her that you're here? Go for it. At least to get you two speaking again. Well, um, does someone want to start? No? Oh, okay. Um, Jenny, do you want to start? I think Daisy should start. What do you want me to say, Jenny? I want to know why you lied. You know why I lied. I want to hear it from your own mouth. I want to hear you say it. I lied because I already knew that Jess and Emmett were a couple and I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Greg, Daisy's an outstanding star. But Emmett doesn't love you and he never would. What? Emmett didn't love you. He never did. And he was never going to. What do you want me to say? The minute he met Jess, the minute he sat by her, by that pond, he was hers. Look, I think some people might be getting a little bit carried away. No, she needs to hear this. You need to hear this. We all, at some time or another, meet people we're supposed to spend the rest of our lives with. People we think who are right for us and people we fall madly in love with. And we start imagining what our children would look like and what it would be like to be a proper couple. But that never really happens. Not for the first time. And you spend a few days, a few months, a few years fantasizing what it would be like with them. And then when you think about it rationally, when you sit down and work out what it would be like to function as a real couple, I know that you think Emmett was the one, and I know that you think he was right for you in you think you loved him, and you think you had a chance with him, but that chance vanished the moment he met Jess. And you know what? I'm glad he met Jess. Because you can do a lot better. You deserve a lot better. You deserve someone who notices you, someone who clicks with you, someone who is compatible with you, someone who brings out the good in you. I loved him. I know you did. But I think it's time to let him go.
No, and Daisy got me chucking you before I hit that off. I'm fine. Honestly. Nothing quite like a good sunset, is there? I'm reminded when I was camping with some colleagues in the salt flats of Botswana. There's nothing to be seen in any direction, and about half eight, the sun began to set. And it was just this pure, raw sunset. You know, it wasn't blocked by buildings or trees or cars or people. It's just this divine landscape of orange. It sounds beautiful. It was. There's something happening here But what it is ain't exactly clear Young people speak in their minds Are getting so much resistance From behind Every time we stop Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down Stop 